Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Dave, and this is my video on how to protect yourself from getting hacked. Uh, you might be here because you saw that a few prominent YouTubers, such as Markiplier, recently had their channels and other accounts hacked by a group, who I'm not going to name just to prevent them from getting more exposure and more of the attention that they're craving. You might be here because you just want some help with your own cybersecurity too, and by all means, that's a perfect place for you to be because I'm going to tell you about it. So, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we have to address is that there is no 100% foolproof way to secure all of your accounts other than to be completely disconnected and not give your information to anybody. And in today's world, that's kind of hard to do. <laughs> so, anybody that'll tell you otherwise on that is either really naive or they're just blatantly lying to you. Um, black hat and gray hat hackers are very much like terrorists, so you have to deal with them in very similar ways. Their goal is to use malicious acts to coerce you into getting what they want. And uh, if you give them what they want, they're just going to keep trying to get more from you. So you have to not negotiate with them, and you have to make yourself a hard target. If you're a hard target, they're not going to come after you. Uh, it's kind of like a common criminal on the side of the, uh, or on a street somewhere, a normal thief. If they see an MMA fighter, they're probably not going to go and try to mug him. They'll probably go for the little old lady instead because, well, she's got a purse they can easily grab, and uh, she's probably not going to chase him down and fight back. <laughs> the other thing is that um, <laughs> the best hackers out there, they operate a lot like a business. So... They want to make the most money that they can with the very least amount of effort and time they put into it. Um, I mean, really, you can't negotiate with them at all because they hold all the cards. Otherwise, you wouldn't be talking to them in the first place. And really, if you think about it, if you do negotiate with them, say, for example, if they had one of those um, viruses or hacks on your computer where if you try to get on and it tells you that your data has been locked and you have to pay them X number of dollars to get back on your information, what's to tell? What's to say that they're going to actually hold up their end of the bargain once you do pay them? And even more than that, what's going to prevent or deter them from trying to do it again in the future? So you don't negotiate with them. You just can't. So what you can do, like I said, is make yourself a hard target. And let's look at how you can do that now. So we can break up your ability to make yourself a hard target and to harden your accounts into two categories. There's things within your control, and then there's things outside of your control. And the things outside of your control are really too numerous to mention. and include things like programming errors, uncorrected exploits, and so on. If we look at the incident with Markiplier recently, I can give you one good example. So the MCN dashboard is a tool that a lot of YouTubers use. I don't know if I wouldn't say a lot, maybe a few. <laughs> um, there's different ones, I suppose, but um, it's a tool that YouTubers use to uh, have an easy to use heads up display of their analytics. A lot of the stuff that you can already read on YouTube in the first place. Something like that has to go and have your credentials for YouTube, it has to. So if there's an exploit for it, which there is apparently, <laughs> Uh, people can get into it and they can take your credentials from that and then use it to access your account. That's why you don't want to uh, use companies that you're not 100% sure on. The only thing you can really do about that, because like I said, it's outside of your control, is just to ask the right questions. And these kinds of questions that you should be asking if you're dealing with a lot of money or you really care <laughs> are uh, what kind of encryption do they use? Do they have a network security team? Do you have an intrusion prevention system? And what kind of support do you offer in the event that my account is compromised? You know, what are they going to do if your account details are completely lost? If they are a serious company based on IT in this new world, they should have answers to all these questions. And if they can't answer them, you may want to reconsider doing business with them. Now, on to things that are under our control. The first thing that you can do is get a good antivirus program. Two best ones that are out there are Symantec and McAfee. And you've almost definitely heard those names at some point while you've been on the internet, especially if you're looking for antivirus. Now, there are free ones out there, and um, some of them can be okay, but 
none of them are quite as good as those two. Uh, you can get free ones that are going to work well, and certainly free is better than nothing, especially if your options are nothing or free. You definitely get something. But I would recommend Mac. Uh, uh, I would recommend McAfee. Sorry, because McAfee tends to give me the least amount of headaches when I've used it. Uh, Semantic has a habit of, say, for example, simple things. When you try to set up a network with more than one computer through Windows, with the, the home group system, for example, you will actually have a lot of problems because Semantic blocks those connections <laughs> by default. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Maybe not. It kind of depends on how you're looking at it. If it's just your own small home network, you may not have to worry about it as much. But if you're in public all the time, it might be kind of a good thing. But either way, both McAfee and Semantic have firewall protection options that will protect your computer. And that's one of the key things about it. A good antivirus is going to have not only an antivirus, it's also going to have some things like spyware um, or spyware removal and detection, and it's also going to have intrusion prevention of some kind. Intrusion prevention basically will allow you to prevent outside entities from reaching you by operating or by using malicious code. So, for example, if you go onto a web page and you see, and there's some sort of uh, pop-up that tells you that your computer is at risk and then you try to click the button to get away from it, um, instead of, you know, control all deleting and just closing the task, that could potentially cause a lot of problems for you. That's one way to actually get a virus or any other kind of malware is having that malicious code run on your system without you realizing it. Having something like McAfee or Semantic or other intrusion prevention system is going to help you prevent that from happening, which is really, really good. And <laughs> You want to have that. Um, just to give you a quick view here, this is my version of McAfee that I have, and it comes with Virus Scanning Console. And you also have an email scanner, um, access protection, like I said, permission intrusion prevention. There's an unwanted programs policy that stops you from having programs that you wouldn't want to run on your network or on your computer without you knowing, for example, things like key loggers. Key loggers are pretty cool. They work great if you're the one using them. If they were used against you, they also work really well. So you want to make sure you don't have them on your computer. You get things that quarantine those files. On access scanners are great because anytime you try to open a program, it'll do a quick scan of it to see if it's got anything that looks uh, suspicious, and then it'll block it, which is great. Uh, you also have full scans, target scans, and an auto update task, which is great because you definitely want to update your antivirus. Your antivirus is really only as good as the updates you have for it, also, so keep that in mind. If you want to make sure that your antivirus is working good, you also have to update it. All right, so. That covers antiviruses. <laughs> and uh, the next thing you want to look at, oh, also, sorry, let me go back real quick. I forgot to mention firewalls. Also, those antivirus programs will have something called a firewall. If you're not familiar with what a firewall is, uh, essentially a firewall uh, blocks open ports that you're not using or prevents things from using those ports unless they're specifically authorized. So, for example, HTTP uses a port uh, 80, I believe. So that port is typically always open. Now, it's open, but it's also restricted to specific types of programs like web browsers. <laughs> so if you're not a web browser, nothing should be getting through on that port. It's very similar for pretty much any program that uses connections. They have to have a port to communicate outside and inside the network. Uh, and it works very similar for your uh, router as well. You can actually restrict that. If you have a router, generally they have... Uh, options for you to restrict what ports can go to what places and under what protocols and things, which is great. Windows itself actually has a firewall too, and it works fairly well. Um, you may need to configure it different ways, but it does work. So that's another thing that you have. Still, a third party one is always going to be better than what Windows will give you by default, unfortunately. All right, next up. So we have to talk about patches. So <laughs> regardless of what operating system you're using, or what program software you're going to be using, uh, you have to have some kind of updates or patches to it regularly, otherwise you're not going to be secure. Uh, in the case of, uh, for example, like let's say our Windows um, systems, you have patches uh, almost every week. Uh, typically, I believe the second Tuesday of the month, Patch Tuesday, 
I could be a little bit off on that. I don't remember so much everything about it, but but yeah, it's it's definitely a, it's called Patch Tuesday. But usually, at least uh, once a month, you're going to get patches from Windows, and you should install them uh, whenever you get them because they are absolutely required. Uh, the thing about the patches that come out are that once those patches are made public, that tells everyone what those exploits were and that were fixed, meaning that now everyone knows how to exploit those specific things that were just patched. So you really have to pay attention to that because you don't want to now have an exploit clearly usable on your machine that you haven't patched because you just didn't feel like sitting through that update process when you left the computer. You know, it's uh, Windows makes it pretty easy. Generally, when you want to update, all you have to do is go to update when you're shutting down, and it'll update as you shut down. And that's outstanding because you just tell it to shut down while it's updating, and then you walk away, and it's done. You don't have to worry about it ever again. Sometimes it'll come back up when you turn it back on, but that's rare. Uh, it works the same for everything, even if you have an iPhone or an Android. And those are also super important to get done as well. Uh, I know Android, a lot of the times, they'll change things and people don't like it. Um, but unfortunately, they fix a lot of errors. There have been uh, a few errors that they found with encryption for uh, HTTPS, I think, recently. Uh, and I can't remember off the top of my head what the name of it was, but there was a, a exploit that people could use to take any of your card information that you've been using and decrypt it very quickly and easily. And now they have your information. And that would that had been around for a long time. Uh, once they found it, though, it was patched fairly quickly. And uh, if you hadn't gotten the upgrade to your phone, though, because you heard that, oh, this new update kind of breaks this or that, yeah, you might have some problems with some of your features, but at least you're not going to be broke. And that's important to me. <laughs> I'd rather have money than have to, you know, than not deal with a little bit of an annoyance with a new system. You know, I can learn a new system. I can't learn how to get my money back once it's gone. I mean, I can, sort of. Not, not the way you're thinking. Can I? Never mind. Moving on. So with uh, your own computer secured now, the next thing that you're going to want to ensure is that you use the proper password discipline. Um, that means not using the same password for all of your accounts. I'm sure you've heard this before. But if you look at all of your logins, you'll find that most of them use your email address. So you're kind of giving the hackers one half of your info already if they have your email address because for the most part, you're going to log in the same way to everything unless you want to get a couple different email addresses, in which case, great, because then now you have a couple different emails that will stump people a little bit better. So that's not so bad. Um, but you can mitigate the rest of that risk by just using a different password for every site. That makes it so that in the event that one of your passwords get com gets compromised from one source, at least they won't all be compromised. And wherever possible, use a different username. Now, the other thing to add on with that password security is you want to use a strong password. And I know these are extremely annoying and they're hard to do, but the key thing to remember here is longer is better. The more characters you put in it, the longer it would take to crack or decrypt. Because the programs that people are going to use to decrypt or hack passwords are typically going to start small and then work to larger sets. So it will take longer the longer the password is. And sometimes, if it's long enough, they'll just say, oh, this has been running too long, it's not going to work. And again, that's making yourself a hard target, and that's what we're trying to do. So the next thing is we'll need to follow some basic tips when it comes to safe browsing. The first is that you should never open an email unless you know where it's coming from, and especially if it has attachments. <laughs> so if you receive an email with links in it, you should not click any of those links because a hyperlink can display anything on its face but actually go somewhere completely different. If you have done any kind of HTML programming or any making of anything uh, with you know web content related, you know exactly how that works with an href. Even if you've used a uh, a uh, like a brow like a forum website, very similar where you type in addresses, you can put anything you want in the in like the dis display of it, um, but the actual tag is going to send you somewhere else. You actually see this a lot with uh, BattleNet passwords. It's how a lot of them got hacked. Is uh, people get an email that says it's from Blizzard, but it's not really from Blizzard. It's actually from 
any of these hackers that are trying to steal your information. And it'll have a link that says a battle.net website. So you'll think, okay, that looks about right. HTTPS, www.battle.net or something like that. And they'll click that thinking, okay, that's taking me to the page, but it's not. They're just spoof. They're A, they're spoofing the email address that's being sent to you. So it looks like it was sent by Blizzard. And then B, they're actually just sending you a fake link to a separate website. And if you try to log in with that with your credentials, they just took all your stuff. And now they need it onto your account and do whatever they want and ruin all your characters. So what a shame. <laughs> it's going to happen to a lot of people. It's, it's pretty bad. Um, you really can't get a whole... It's hard to get your stuff back after that. It's very similar to ID theft. It really sucks. Um, hasn't happened to me, though, because I don't click links and emails. So keep that in mind. Don't do that. Um, the other thing is when you're going to shop at websites, you don't need to give out a whole lot of information. If ever somebody asks you for a social security number and it's not a bank, you know, trying to make like a loan decision, don't give them your social security number. That's bad. It's very, very bad. <laughs> your social security number is not something you should be giving out lightly, especially online. Um, if you ever think something sounds fishy, definitely Go on to Google, Google the website, and check it out for yourself and see if it is fake or if it's not. Uh, it's really that simple. You can usually find out everything just by doing that. Generally, when you buy things, you're only going to need about four or five pieces of information. That's going to be your name, your address, the card number, the date, and the usually the uh, security code on the back of it. Three or four digits, whatever you happen to have for your card. If they, if they ask for anything more than that, that should be raising red flags, and you should be checking it out after that. Not checking out from your cart, but instead just, like, you know, checking out if it's a good website or not. So, after that, before you even enter that information, though, I should have brought this up first, before you enter any of that information, you want to check something in the top, in the, uh, top of the browser. So, we'll take a look at, for example, mine here. You can see that up here I've got HTTPS and it's got a lock symbol. It'll do that on pretty much every web browser out there. You'll want to see that HTTPS because HTTPS tells you that it's secure, it's encrypted. If it's not secured or encrypted, that means your information is just going out plain. And you don't want that because that means that anything you just sent out could have been copied by anybody. And now they have that information without even having to work very hard for it. So, again, make yourself a hard target. Look for those types of things. Those are important. Also, it's hard to be an illegitimate site and have HTTPS. The next thing that you're going to want to do is not use unsecured wireless networks. <laughs> this is kind of a hard one for a lot of people, especially if you're living in a city or something. Um, if you're going to a Starbucks to use the Internet all the time, especially if that's where you're doing all your shopping or all your bills and all your banking, that is a really bad plan. That is probably the worst thing that you can do. Uh, unfortunately, it's all too easy to do what's called a man-in-the-middle attack on those types of systems. And basically what that is, is let's say that over here is the wireless network that you're trying to get onto, the legitimate Starbucks network. And then here's your computer over here, and it's going to connect into that one. But the problem is there's going to get somebody, there's somebody else that's going to be showing up, and we'll just... Do it like this to make myself a moose. Oh, sorry. Seriously, though. So <laughs> let's say that I'm the hacker. The hacker is going to take the wireless network here and connect to it himself, right? So now I'm connected to it. The next thing you're going to have is you, and you're going to try to connect to that network, but instead it's going to get intercepted. It's going to plug into me. So now I'm hacking your computer, and you don't even realize it because basically all the information is being sent through me, through me, to over here, and that's it. So I'm getting everything that you're sending out, and you're not even aware of it. So that's something you really got to be careful about. If you wanted to go there and, you know, just look at uh, the latest news or something, that's perfectly fine. As long as you've done the steps I mentioned before, by all means, you shouldn't have a problem. Your computer should be fairly secure. But you still have to realize that anything that you pass out of your computer is going is possible for it to get intercepted. Stuff coming in, you can filter that out. You can fix that. Stuff going out, not so easy. Same thing with the airport. You can have probably even a bigger problem with those because anybody can go around there. <laughs> but yeah, same kind of thing. Any really any free wireless network out there by a store or any of them 
in general. If you find an open network uh, just in your neighborhood, don't use it because you don't know. You have no idea. And that can be really bad for you. The next thing, and really the last thing and most important thing, is just to educate yourself. So watching this video is definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, the world of cybersecurity is an ever-changing and always evolving field. You may not need to be the top of the food chain on it. Well, you don't have to be. You don't have to sit here every day spending every minute of your time trying to figure out what the latest security threat is. If you even read, you know, one security, one cybersecurity blog a week, you're probably doing pretty well for yourself. But if you do nothing and you don't worry at all, Eventually, it's going to come back and bite you, especially nowadays. So I'll be doing some more videos that uh, will help out on this and will help get you to be in pretty good shape if you watch them. Um, these things are going to be from uh, things like how do you hackers get into your computer, everything from key loggers to packet sniffers and SQL injection. And then I'm going to go do some demonstrations about how to do things like configure your router so that it's more secure, so that you're using the most secure settings you can, how to make your home network, you know, more secure in general. <laughs> so if you have those types of things and you're serious about wanting to protect yourself, keep checking out this channel, subscribe, and uh, like the video if you did like it. And if you didn't like it, sorry. <laughs> uh, please share if you also think this would be helpful for anybody you know. And uh, I'll see you next time.